Hello out there, this is the Irate Veteran coming at you with another video. Any veterans out there needing any veteran to veteran advice, um, just send me an email to vamadness at gmail.com and I'll be happy to advise. I have lots of videos. Check out uh, my YouTube channel, VA Madness. Um, if any of those videos apply to you or you're interested in any, watch them all the way through. That way, if you do have questions that you want me to help answer, you won't ask me questions that are already answered in the video. Because I'm really, really am busy. I get lots of emails, lots of phone calls. So it would be great if you could help me help veterans. All right, so let's move on to today's subject, which is TBI. And it seems like it's a pretty simple deal. It, there are only two elements that have to be established. A diagnosis and are the residuals. Really easy, right? <laughs> but remember, we're working with the VA, right? They can make the easiest thing, the hardest impossible thing to go through that they possibly... Uh, what do you say? All right, so... I guess the first thing you know need to know is what is a TBI? And basically, it's any disruption to brain function as a result of an external force. You can read the whole definition here, uh, but that's all it is, right? And so if you've been involved in an event um, such as a, a, you know, ex uh, an explosion, a car accident, right? Pretty much there's your external force right? And usually there's no argument with that specific part of TBI. Um, and then if in your documentation, in your record, one of the five elements it lists here, right? And it says, it even says uh, that disruption of brain function as a result of external force that is indicated by new onset or worsening of at least one of one of the following clinical signs immediately following the event and that's the key part immediately following the event right so in other words if you had any period um, of loss or deceased level of con or <laughs> decreased level of consciousness right then you've had a traumatic brain injury, according to this definition, or any one of these other signs, right? If you've had, um, like, alteration of uh, sensory alteration, right? In other words, you have, um, right after the accident, you have uh, an altered sense to whatever it might be, right? So, you know, your, you know, your face is all tingly and, and hot and whatever it might be, but that's not normal, right? In other words, that's an alteration to your senses. So if that type of thing is recorded in your record, right, then easily just the record will establish that you were involved in a TBI event. So, and this is right from the VA DOD playbook here, right? The VA doesn't get, right, to say, yeah, you know, that happened to you, but, you know, you didn't have, weren't involved in TI, TBI event. And by the way, they do that all the time. And the way, if, if, if in fact, you've had an event which involved an external force, right, and you had one of these five issues here, right, um, uh, it happened immediately after the event, right, then they don't get to debate that. This has already been established, right? Um, and if this has happened, again, VA playbook, the above criteria define a historical event of TBI. If a person meets these criteria, they should be diagnosed as having, a, as having sustained a TBI. So, and you notice the part, they should, right? In other words, maybe there's a reason why they wouldn't be. But on the cases I've looked at, which are quite a few, um, where the VA says, oh, you didn't have that event. It, it has nothing to do with the should be. They, they just say, that, you know, yeah, you've had this stuff, but that it just doesn't matter. They just don't bother to explain anything, right? So 
Either way, they need to follow this definition. So if you've been denied TBI or you're going through TBI right now, right, um, you need to go through and see exactly what, what was your event and did it meet this criteria and did the VA still say you didn't have an event, right? Well, in that case, you can challenge it saying, okay, you didn't follow the policy, right? They don't get to deviate from it. Anyway, so external force. Um, again, this is right of the VA playbook here, right? Um, and it talks about what the external force is, right? Forces causing brain injury include head being struck by an object, head striking an object, a brain undergoing acceleration, deacceleration movement without direct external trauma to the head. All right, that's a really important part. I've seen a lot of denials for TBI where their first reason they're denying the claim is they'll say, well, there was no indication of that there was a head injury. Well, there doesn't have to be. Did your brain undergo an acceleration, deacceleration movement during your external, your event that, you know, your, you know, again, the event of some kind of force, right? You're in a car accident. Of course, there's forces in that accident. Everyone's pretty well aware that whiplash is a common injury where your head goes back and forth, right? In other words, what's happening to your brain inside your skull when that's happening is going clink, 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 right? So, I mean, not that that's funny, but the whole point here is, right, that it's an acceleration, deacceleration movement, right? So, you know, if they've denied you um, for the fact that you there was no head injury, well, then again, it's an easy challenge um, if you were in a type of uh, event that may have caused an acceleration, deacceleration type movement. Uh, causes of TBI. Number one cause of TBI are falls, right? I mean, and, and so if have you been involved in a fall while you were in service? I mean, I was under, I, 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 was, I had a number of falls while I was in service. You know, I, you know, tripped, I've been pushed, I've been, you know, I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff. I've been blown down. I mean, I mean, as far as falls, uh, you know, my career's full of them, right? So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are the same thing. Now, were you injured in those falls? You know, that's a separate matter. But the whole point is, there's numerous ways and causes of TBI, right? And most of them, um, especially for you longtime service members, you've had a few. You've had a few falls. You were probably involved in an accident, right? I mean, here and there. And some of us were involved in blasts, right? So pretty much, um, you know, there's these causes, uh, you know, are not all that uncommon for those in the military. Okay. Um, Cumulative concussion. All right, so there is a thought out there, uh, and it's um, you know in the medical community that repeated uh, head type trauma or acceleration, deacceleration movements, right? I mean, repeated things that may have caused the TBI that you know um, you know could in fact make symptoms uh, uh, more. I don't want to say progressive, but but more serious, right? Uh, so the idea is if you've had multiple events, especially close together, when you file your claim, make sure you write a statement to document those things if they're not in the record. Um, establishing a TBI event. Uh, now this is the part that can be done in multiple ways. The strongest evidence to establish your event is, of course, the contemporaneous record, right? It's records generated at the time where it happened, right? Your medical records, that the medical treatment you had, you know, emergency room records, accident reports, whatever it might be, those are the most important record that you have, right? So those are the ones that weigh extremely heavily on ex establishing that, in fact, the event happened and you were involved in it. Post-event records. Now, there, you know, may have talked a bit, talked about that 
you know, accident over time. Uh, you know, you want you want to have those, right? Or any any type of um, medical treatment that you may have had after the fact, right? That may be linked to um, the actual event. Again, that all helps because you may have said, you know, even though this is some months later, right? It, it, that oh, uh, yeah, my headache started right after I was in that accident or whatever, right? Well, that's an important record, right? Because you're in seeking treatment, you're trying to get better. So there's an incentive to tell the doctor exactly what happened. Um, and that's a real credible way to establish an event is that you went for treatment at some point and you relayed a history of what may have happened because you're trying to get better. You have an incentive to tell the truth. Right. So and then, of course, um, any type of statements that you now write in conjunction with your claim or that you have written in conjunction with other claims. Right. Um, so, again, you can establish an event in service with your statement. Uh, it is nice if you have some of all of the above. Right, some contemporaneous record, some post-service evidence of some kind, and then your statement. I mean, that would create a very strong uh, case to establish your event. Um, for a veteran without a diagnosis of TBI, the initial TBI exam must come from one of four doctors, which are listed here. Now, there is a big hoopla uh, about the VA for years was using just basically any old kind of doctor to do these TBI exams. And many, many veterans were denied um, TBI during that time. And the VA had to regroup back up and then give TBI exams with the proper type of doctors for all those people that they missed, right? But having experienced the process for myself with the proper type of doctors, right, I can tell you for a fact, it wasn't the problem that they were using the wrong type of doctor, right? What they do were doing is using stupid doctors, right? Even these four doctors, I've had an exam where I had probably one of each of them. That just happened to be complete stupid idiot doctors, right? Which means it doesn't matter what kind of doctor it is. If he's a moron, he's going to say stupid stuff, right? And so... Um, the key is getting a doctor who knows what they're doing, right? Who's kind of smart, right? That's the key. But anyway, so, and you'll know when you go through your exam if you've had an idiot or not, because they'll say stupid stuff that you can challenge very easily by simply looking at what they said and then looking up symptoms, you know, with Mr. Google's help, right? Um, so, and then challenging what they said. Because it's really likely, right, you're dealing with stupid people, right? They won't follow anything we just talked about. They won't follow the VA DOD definition of what a TBI is. They'll, they'll just do everything they can. Even if you meet every single element, right, they'll do everything they can and say, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, all that happened, but he still didn't wasn't involved in a TBI. And they'll say something stupid like, because he didn't have a head injury, right? Well, as we know, you don't need to have a head injury, right? So, um, so one of the things you need to do, right, is you must be very careful to fully explain every single fact involved in Every, the whole deal. Remember, you have to connect the dots for these people. You have to construct a narrative, right, that links everything together, right, which means you have to use that logical thinking process because VA has none, right? So one of the things that I've found missing, not only in veteran statements, but at the same time, they, they use those, the VA uses those holes, right, to discredit anything you may have said or what the record says, right? So one of the things you absolutely want to talk about in your statement that you should write when you're doing a TBI is your before the event condition, right? 
uh, and, and, and talk about some of the things that you completely believe are related to the TBI, right? And that before the event, we're fine. And after the event, they're no longer fine, right? So you want to talk about that you, these things were, you were fine. Be you, you could smell perfect, and then after the event, you, you can't smell at all, right? I mean, so you, I mean, you want to talk about some of that um, before the event issues. Um, when there is an event, remember, there's a, there's a gap. There's several gaps in the whole process, right? From, I mean, the time that you're, let's talk about a vehicle accident. From the time you're struck, bang, accident happens, right? Before the first responder gets there, who knows what's happening during that point, right? Usually only the people involved in the accidents. At times, there are witnesses there, but more often than not, they weren't paying attention or they're not, paying attention to details that are need need to be put forth, things you would know. For example, when you were initially, when your vehicle was initially impacted, right, how did you feel then? What, what senses did you, did you lose consciousness for just a few seconds, for a minute or two? Were you completely dazed? The point is, there's a gap there where no one knows but you, right? That is perfectly credible for you to relay what those symptoms were in that gap before first responders arrived. And then even after first responders arrive, right, there's the movement from your treatment at the scene, your movement to the health provider, right, where, again, there may be things that aren't documented during that ride, right, you know, that so, I mean, maybe you were nauseous. Maybe you were throwing up. I mean, all this stuff is is relevant. Maybe that wasn't recorded by the first responders, right? So the idea is you need to fill in these gaps, right? And then when you're actually at the provider, right? Um, for instance, just talking about one of the car the car accident. One, I was in a pretty serious car accident while I was in service, and and when I did make it to the treatment facility, which was about an hour later, right? Maybe maybe two. I mean, tell you the truth, I was in La La Land part of it. I, I don't know really how long it was. It was a while though, right? So, 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 but, um, you know, when I was at the treatment facility, I, I was in pain, right? I wasn't concerned about telling the doctor anything else about, except where it was extreme pain. Right, so some of the stuff that was relevant, right, but I didn't discuss because they were only concerned about, wow, is he, how seriously is this guy hurt, and what do we need to provide for immediate treatment, right, to make sure he's okay, right? Well, that doesn't mean there was other symptoms, but a lot of times those other things aren't captured, right? So again, it's up to you to fill in the gaps, right? That, um, yes, my, you know, my ribs were broken, my shoulder was hurt, and my knee was hurt, my whole left side was hurt. I mean, whatever it might be. But then you might also say, but you know what? Um, when I got home after that was released, you know, my neck got so stiff, I, I could barely move it, right? That wasn't relevant at the provider because it wasn't stiff then, right? And it wasn't painful then, but later, it became stiff and painful, right? So you need to fill in all of these periods with a really good statement because it's all relevant. And if you leave one single hole, right, the VA is going to drive right through it. Because remember, what they do is they'll examine and recall or, 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 or point out every single detail that is against is against anything in your favor, right? And the fact that there's gaps, they'll fill that in with what they want to fill it in, right? No, 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 don't let them do that. You need to control the narrative because you're the one who experienced it. All right, so TBI symptoms. Here's one of the things that is really, really important. And I've read many, went through many TBI claims where the veteran has, 
for lack of a better description, put his foot in his mouth, right? Because he's trying to give relevant information during this process, right? And he doesn't, the veteran, she, he or she doesn't know that the VA plans on twisting everything you say, right? So one of the things about symptoms of TBI, the closer these symptoms are, to the event, it's the more likely the event causes those symptoms, right? So if you're asked, for instance, let's say part of what you believe is from your TBI are headaches that started after the event. If the doctor was to ask you, well, how soon after this event, or you, you've written a statement, how soon after the event did your headaches start? And, and you know, you think back and you say, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, you're asking yourself, the you don't really, well, sometime after the event, you might say, and, 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 the, and they'll, usually they'll press you. Well, how long, how long after the event? Well, you don't know, right? So what you end up saying is, well, I, I, for sure, like a couple weeks later, I know for sure, I, I mean, I had a really bad headache, right? But you're guessing, right? And now if you were to say, for example, your headache started two weeks after the event, they will absolutely say that has nothing to do with the event, right? In other words, don't guess. Yes, if you know for a fact you were absolutely fine after, after the event and your headache really did start two weeks after the event, say that because you should say that. That's the truth, right? But if you don't know, say that because that's the truth. And then all you have to say is real simple. Yeah, it started you know, pretty immediate after the event, but I, I couldn't put a time frame on it. I would be totally guessing, and I don't want to do that, right? It's that simple. That's all you have to say, right? Because then no one can, no one can come up and say, listen, <laughs> you know, it happened two weeks after the event. There's just no way that happened. I mean, no way it had anything to do with TBI, right? So don't put your foot in your mouth. Don't guess, right? Um, some symptoms are only noted on use. Now the VL try to try to twist that, right? So let's say you know you're 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 deployed, and some of us, uh, I, I'm one of those. Some, um, you know, I'm not a big reader. You know, so you know the times I was deployed, um, you know, it wasn't like I took a bunch of books with me. You know, as a matter of fact, I didn't <laughs> ever. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. You know, so, but anyway, yeah, uh, you know, so I, you know, with my off time, I just hung out or laid down, relaxed. I, I wasn't interested in reading anything, right? But the point is, if you were involved in an event, you may not know that you would have, like, reading problems because you weren't reading, right? Until the point where you decided that, you know, or through your job were needed to read enough to where you would say, damn, I have problems understanding what I'm reading here. What's going on, right? Well, you might not notice that till later, right? So make sure when you do go about explaining your symptoms or noting them in a statement that you specifically note these things you noted later, but you should also say why you didn't note them earlier, which is really simple. You just weren't doing that action, right? I mean, uh, in downtime in between missions or off duty, I mean, it's not like you're doing things that need your, you know, need you to concentrate. At least, at least I didn't. I mean, go and have a few beers. I mean, I didn't have to concentrate too much on that. <laughs> right? But anyway, uh, I'm just saying that, you know, there could be things that pop up after the fact. And you just need to make sure that because those, those things those issues weren't in real close proximity to the event, you explain why you didn't notice them at closer to the event, right? So, um, and some symptoms absolutely are delayed, like seizures, right? So, so um, and again, the VA knows all of this, but believe me, they're volunteering nothing, right? So this is why it's important for you to know these things and be careful really what you say, right? So you have to educate yourself about TBI. 
I mean, there is tons of information out there, right? Um, one, one thing that I've discovered about TBI is what the medical com community um, knows about TBI uh, is far outweighed by what they don't know, right? And, and that's where whenever you get these conclusive answers from VA examiners, you know, usually you can easily offset them by just doing the research. Because pretty much when it comes to something that is absolute, there's not a lot of that with TBI, right? So um, definitely do your own research. Because um, the VA, like I said, the examiner you get is probably, you know, goes through some training on the basics of TBI. And, ba and you know what? I, I, at least the ones I've been with, and it's, I've been with, unfortunately, too many, right? They'll say, you know, things that just aren't so, right? As if they have no idea what TBI is about. So you need to know what TBI is about, right? Um, the examiner, even if there's things that are unclear in how you've explained it, they're not going to ask you any specifics, Right. For example, one of the things that are in my medical record after one of my events, matter of fact, it's right on my tire, retirement physical, right? I, I mentioned that during the exercise, I was having a lot of problems with dizziness, and I had never been dizzy ever before. But, and, but now, every single time, um, I'm, uh, you know, my body is stressed physically, right? Um, I, I get this dizziness, right? And and often it was really difficult for me to even complete, you know, our daily, um, you know, physical training because I, I would become dizzy. Sometimes I had to fall out of runs and, you know, clear my head, right? Um, so, and the my examiner specifically said, dizziness is not at all tied at all to... TBI. But of course, then I go and find the research that specifically says, yeah, it is, <laughs> right? You know, so, uh, you know, I was able to directly contradict what this examiner said. In other words, he's he's stupid. He, he should know these things. I shouldn't have to tell them what the medical studies have said. A guy who's doing your exam, right? He should know exactly, he should be up on all of the latest Right, and this wasn't latest stuff. This was old stuff, right? Same. You could go to the CDC and look at what they talk about, and some of the things they talk about is some of these symptoms are only exhibited under physical exertion, right? So you need to know this stuff because they won't, and they won't question you on on things that maybe aren't quite explained well enough, right? So. Um, because you know what? Examiners want to take the easy way. That's it. They don't give a shit about you, right? So, you know, your problems are your problems. Pfft, they need to go to lunch. Ain't got time for your shit. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, like I said, educate yourself. That, that's the best way to advocate for yourself is to, you know, do everything yourself, right? Um, a lot of people are worried about how their TBI is classified. When it comes to actually being rated, the initial classification of your TBI is completely irrelevant. So the fact that they're saying your TBI was mild has absolutely nothing, is not tied to your rating in any way, shape, or form, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about how they initially classify it um, as far as a rating goes. Um, now, what these VA examiners will do is try to say that even if the symptoms started immediately upon your TBI event, they'll say they'll say something like, "Well, because of he, it, you know, he had a mild, obviously a mild TBI event, um, even though this symptom started right then, you know, this is something you don't see in mild, right? Well, again." That's stupid, right? But they say stuff like that. Again, you can counter it with the research that, have, that they have out there, especially when they're making most TBIs for most veterans um, are going to be diagnosed 
per history, right? So no one really knows how serious your symptoms were at that time, right? So, um, you know, the fact that the VA examiner might want to downplay um, the, ex the seriousness of the event, uh, you know, I think you can argue that logic pretty easy with the research that's available out there, right? So again, you have to go find that research, right? Um, what are residuals, for example, right? Um, any disability result resulting from a TBI event. In other words, no matter what it is, if that disability can be traced to the event, right, it, that's a residual, right? Whether it would be dizziness or headaches or whatever it might be, right? It will be counted as a residual um, and you'll get rated for it. Now, I can go over all those things, but I'm not going to because this information is already out there. Um, do a Google Disability Made Easy. Um, search that site. Just throw in TBI. And they have a fabulous explanation of how residuals are rated um, and determined, right? So no need for me to go over that. You know, go look at Disability Made Easy. Great explanation, right? I couldn't say anything better than what they've got there. Uh, TBIDBQ. Here's one of the things about the VA, for some reason, um, doesn't want anyone to know about it. Right. So the initial TBI exam, uh, that DBQ, as far as I know, at least I couldn't find it, isn't publicly listed. Now, I did find one. Uh, again, you can do a Google on exactly what I have here, right? Initial TBI, DBQ, 2011, right? And that DBQ, when I went and looked at my specific DBQ for TBI um, and I matched it, the one that was actually filled out, right, rec more recently, right, it pretty much, matter of fact, matches the 211 DBQ that you can find on the internet, almost word for word, right? So um, this is a great guide to look at and to help you get familiar with, you know, what is involved in a TBI exam. Okay. Be mindful of VA traps. Yes, VA some tricky dudes, man. They they'll do anything they can to trip you up, right? And one of the ways they do that is they just don't tell you things. Like on the TBI DBQ, right? There's like ten separate categories. The very first one says memory, attention, concentration, and executive functions, right? And if you read these, no complaints of impairment of memory, attention, uh, concentration, or executive functions, right? And then the next one is a complaint of mild memory loss, right? And then, but you see, one of the things it's really not doing it, 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 when it goes on to talk about executive functions, for example, what ex what's an executive function? They're not going to tell you. You see, that's the thing. They expect you, a layperson, to know all the things that may be entailed, things you may be suffering from, right? That you have no idea have anything to do with your TBI. You know why? You're not a doctor, right? <laughs> but they expect you to know these things, right? So... You need, if you don't understand something on the DBQ, once you look at it, you need to look it up and find out. I'll tell you what, executive functions are a number of things, right? Now, when you go to the Disability Made Easy site, and I'm telling you definitely do that, it gives a really good explanation of what executive function, functions are, and it gives some explanations exactly how things are rated on examples of veterans who may have went through the exam. So. You want to listen to that or read that really carefully, right? Because it's going to it's gonna turn some light bulbs on in your head about, wow, you know what? Like spontaneity. Do you know spontaneity is part of an exact executive function, right? Are you bothered by changes in routine, right? I already tell you, I'm, 
I, I, I can't do anything unless it's by routine. If, if it's something that if my routine is at all interrupted at all, right? I I I I, I, I blow a fuse. <laughs> I blow a number of fuses, right? So I mean, so the idea is, I mean, would you have even thought to tell? Um, uh, the examiner that, you know, I have a real problem when my routine's disrupted, right? Would you, you would never even thought of saying something like that, right? But, so that's why you need to look at every single thing under these 10 categories before you go to that exam, right? And for those of you who've been to the exam, you need to go back through and find out and, and uh, look at what was said on your DVQ and what was asked of you because you may have things to add. You may want to go through another exam, right? So um, in any case, uh, just remember the VA is not going to do a damn thing to help you in this endeavor, right? You have to take control. All right, so that's all I got to say on the subject. So anyone's got any questions, you know, I, I'm here for you. All right, Irate Veteran, out.